So how does Games Workshop decide which armies need to get stronger or weaker? Well in a recent article, they basically told us exactly how they choose things to buff and nerf. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd talk through the secrets of Games Workshop's balance system, and perhaps the first time that they've talked most candidly as to how they choose armies to buff and nerf. Games Workshop's game balance has been getting a fair bit better lately, and has been a bit of a tune-up on the system that they used through 8th edition and previously, which was apparently done by a hamster-based system in Games Workshop Nottingham HQ. Graham the hamster will be presented with 26 food bowls, each one of them representing a different faction in Warhammer 40k. Games Workshop's balance team would note down the bowl that Graham chose to eat from, flip a coin and then buff or nerf that given faction by an unspecified amount. The system had been working great throughout the chapter approves of 8th edition 40k, but since the sad passing of Graham in early 9th edition, they had to find a different system, one that they've recently shared with us in a MetaWatch article. Overall in 9th edition, game balance as a whole has been a bit of a mess. I'd go as far as saying that the majority of codexes when they dropped had been a bit on the overpowered side, and some of them just absolutely ridiculously so. Over the past year though, I think Games Workshop have managed to turn things a bit around on the balance front, and now I'd say that game balance is about as good as it's been throughout all of 8th and 9th, mainly due to these balanced data slates and some actual timely points updates, not waiting for chapter approves. I'm not really convinced that the codex releases have been getting massively better, these are the ones out of 2022, and roughly how strong I'd rate them when they dropped. Gene Steeler Cult were kind of well balanced, Custodius Tower and Craft Worlds were all a bit too strong in my opinion compared with most of the meta. They then doubled down on it with Harlequins and Tyranids, which were both massively overpowered and dominated tournaments for quite a while, before toning it down with the two Knight Codexes, Chaos Marines and Demons, which while they all seem decent enough to compete and a challenge to overcome, at least they're not stomping the meta and winning all the tournaments like the previous five were. Demon Flamers in particular do seem pretty mad, but at least that's one unit as opposed to a whole army. Then of course we've had the Leagues of Votan, which are a bit of a mixed bag, certainly the rules that they printed were insanely strong, but they've been promptly squashed and nerfed even before anyone has had the chance to play them. My guess now is that they're still going to be able to compete, but not be a problem for game balance. Despite this rather mixed bag, I do think that their recent balance patches have been largely really quite good. The balanced data slates that they've been coming out with quarterly have generally targeted the weakest factions with powerful buffs, and hit some of the strongest factions with a few choice nerfs. Pretty much all the codexes that they released over tuned have taken a bit of a beating from the data slates. I really do like the way that with their chapter approved points cost as well, they're updating them digitally so it means they're not 6 months behind the data. Again that's actually allowed them to target the things that are strong and avoid the things that aren't. Currently I'd argue that 40k 9th edition has had better balance than it's had in a long time, and perhaps that's partly due to Games Workshop's apparent new methodology when it comes to changing things. The glimpse behind the scenes that we got came from a recent MetaWatch article. This one was aimed at Age of Sigmar, but basically everything that they said can equally apply to 40k, and it does seem that out of the two, 40k seems to have been attracting a lot more balanced attention and thought going into it, perhaps partly due to all of the overtuned codexes that they've been releasing. It really is nice to see Games Workshop actually being a bit open as to how and why they change things, even if there's probably still things that they can't quite say, for example trying to keep the game balanced so it sells better. I'm sure they won't be too against the idea of changing what's best fairly frequently to drive sales for their game. In any case though, the stated aims that they have is external balance, internal balance, and the age of Sigma to keep universal options down to a small percentage of choices, the first two bits in particular being very relevant to 40k. First up, they say for external balance, they want to try and keep factions within a 45-55% to win rate at events, so buffs and nerfs are largely going to be targeted at the things outside of that bracket to try and bring them into the fold. Win rates perhaps aren't the entire story, you might still have armies that are only strong because they have one good list that works and everything else is garbage, but I feel like for a simple and at least fairly achievable target, that's really quite a good goal. If they did manage to force all the armies in 40k between those limits, it would mean that the vast majority of top armies wouldn't be insurmountable even for some of the weaker armies in the game. What I thought was really quite interesting as well from the article was discussing internal balance as well. They say that each army they look at has different targets for them, as there's a bit of a difference with armies that have a crazy amount of data sheets like Space Marines, or ones that have very few like say Harlequins who only have 8 unique ones of their own. In general though, their rough aim though is to get 60% of data sheets being used in at least 5% of competitive lists, with the same thing for 50% of faction enhancements in Age of Sigma. Maybe applying a similar sort of philosophy to things like, say, chapter tactics or regimental traits and things for 40k. 
I'll admit maybe the target on this one does sound a little bit on the low side. I feel like you could imagine an army with just a few good units and a bunch of picks that are picked really nichely by just a small amount of lists and you still fit this criteria even if quite a lot of the book is basically garbage most of the time. Still though, I feel like this one is really quite a good start. Certainly anything not meeting that kind of criteria would imply that a lot of people are just spamming the exact same thing in an army, maybe indicating that they either need to nerf the strongest stuff or buff the weakest stuff, depending on how the army is performing against other armies in the game. Age of Sigmar also has some universal options that can be taken by just about any army that's a little bit less relevant to 40k, but still maybe has some rough analogues in say things like assassins or inquisitors that you can add to just about any imperial list, and the same now for some agents of chaos, maybe say Abaddon in a Supreme Command Detachment. At least for Age of Sigmar, they say that they want to try and keep these truly universal options down to a minimum, aims to better focus on the actual individual merits of the faction, rather than just having say one generic pick that's say spammed by every single Imperial army. I feel like in general that's not a particularly bad ethos to have. Say for example when we looked over that Imperial Navy datasheet recently, I think it would have been a pretty dumb move on their part to make them super overpowered so every single Imperial army wanted one, as it would just look really weird to have every army suddenly acquire a random team of Voidsmen that might not particularly fit very well with an army's aesthetic or law. Apparently those three aims are in this order of priority, so external balance first, then internal, then keeping down universal options too much, and apparently if they're achieved they'd aim to increase the ambition of those targets. Obviously game balance is something that you can always be improving on, and it's basically impossible to ever get 100% perfect. It was kind of interesting that they also revealed the way that they look at data from tournaments and things too. They do track a whole bunch of things, but the primary thing that they look at is win rate. Here's the list that they have going for Age of Sigmar, and apparently this is pulled tournament data from the previous 60 days, looking at their own events, plus Best Coast Pairings and Tawny Keeper, two of the most widely used event organising apps. From the data that they said from Age of Sigmar, they said that they tracked an awful lot of events, over 400 of them. This implies that they're looking at small ones just as much as big ones, though I would maybe argue that there's a little bit better quality of data coming from bigger events than smaller ones, usually if they're played with a lot of players amongst 5 rounds or so, you've got a lot less random chance of some armies just doing well or badly by good or bad luck, and things tend to even them out over the course of a weekend. Still though, more events does mean more data, and perhaps might better reflect the way that 40k is played all over, and not just at the most competitive of events. They also mentioned their margin of error as well, apparently they believe these numbers to be correct within a 5% margin of error across all major factions. Presumably that means the, the least played ones will likely have the full 5% margin of error one way or the other, where the big ones with more data should have significantly less than that. It definitely doesn't hurt to be aware of that, and maybe that's part of the reason why they're kind of tolerant anything 5% either side of the 50% line as it could be that there's just an element of chance having that faction do particularly strong over the last couple of months. Then using this, they use the data to target buffs and nerfs. Particularly for 40k, it seems like points changes and things really have been falling on the auto-include type options, particularly things that are often spammed across an army or in almost every single competitive list, and often they might buff things that are a bit less played in weaker armies as well, hopefully improving faction strength and game balance both at once. I feel it would be very unlikely for them not to have a similar system going for 40k, and it might guide us as to what Games Workshop might choose to change at the next balanced data slate or chapter approved points adjustments. These win percentages are from a couple of weeks ago throughout Nephilim, and it currently seems like the strongest armies in the game are Harlequins, Tyranids, Sisters, and Necrons, all of those at or above a 55% win percentage, so might be painting some crosshairs on them. Perhaps the struggling factions significantly below 45%, will be Admech, Astra Militarum, various flavours of Space Marine, plus perhaps Gene Stealer Colt and Grey Knights, though Gene Stealer Colt in particular do have a particularly small player base. I think even since these numbers that I had, a few small wins have put them up to much more like 50% overall. I think it's quite cool as well that they're keeping at least some sort of track of which options are getting played the most. It might allow them to target some specific buffs or nerfs if they wanted to, maybe to things like lesser or greater played chapter tactics. Say for example, out of the top four, certainly Sisters and Necrons are really struggling in terms of having sub-faction balance. Just about every single Sisters list tends to use Bloody Rose for the massive extra melee, and just about every single Necron list seems to use the obsec and pre-game move combo. Again, I guess that maybe could give them an opportunity to nerf those if they did decide that Sisters and Necrons actually warranted rules changes over and above just changes to their secondary objectives, which are also a big faction for Warhammer 40k. 
In any case, I did find it quite interesting that they're being quite so open about how they changed the rules to the game. And I think it's quite cool to see that they actually have some specific methodology and numbers involved now, and not just a case of going to tournaments and seeing what's dominating, and making a fair few more subjective decisions. I think that that was often the way that they had in the past. In any case, let me know what you think. Hopefully the positive trend will continue, and after another balance pass or two, there might genuinely not be all that massive a difference between the top armies and the lowest. I guess that's daring to dream when Warhammer game balance is concerned. If you've enjoyed the video and would like to keep up with Games Workshop's news, rules changes and releases, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, I do generally tend to post 40k content most days. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's how I can afford to keep on making quite so much Warhammer content quite so much of the time. If you have been enjoying a lot, any support on the Patreon is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, an absolutely enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.